guys, I've been over at SHOT Show and I'm going to a little event over here. It says the night UAV CSI event. They're gonna do a mock crime scene and they're gonna be using a drone with some uh, night vision to investigate the scene. So let's go over right now over to the CSI scene and check it out. Here's one of their lighting scenes. When we first arrived, I thought they were pranking me because the GPS took us to the middle of nowhere, but we eventually found where all the cars were at for this particular scene. As you can see, we're a fair distance away from the strip in Vegas. All right, so they're getting ready to go. As you can see, they have some scene lighting over here for uh, you know, crime scenes. They have one in the back over here. Let me go back there. There you see that one. So right now, all the group that we talked with earlier today at, a, at their booth, uh, they're all here getting ready to go. They're getting the camera ready. with uh, They have the drone with some special lighting on there that we'll check out. And then they're doing the crime scene. I think they're going to be doing it over here at this bridge over here. Uh, right around there, you'll see there's some other people with cameras, so so far it's so far it's pretty fun. So yeah, we're just checking out the drone and the lighting, and then meeting the people that we talked with earlier today. Just a short ways away from beginning, we want to let the sun get just a little bit lower over there, so we're truly in a dark environment. What we are going to do this evening is we are going to recreate a, a, a homicide that occurred pretty much right where we are, um, in much in the manner that that homicide originally occurred. We've done these train. We do this program or this process as an elong great elongated training mechanism for the law enforcement agencies in the Southwest. Tonight, you're going to get a very fast view of how that would work. Um, we will have members of Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department joining us shortly. We told them we'd get going at sundown, and for some reason, in somebody's mind, sundown is about an hour from now, so they they misscheduled. But they will be up here. You'll be able to hear from them about the same time as we're finishing up. So before I forget to mention all the people making this happen, we have uh, Fox Fury who have allowed us to use the lighting system. They have this, this program and the CSI program, the way we run it, cannot happen without the technology that happens with this T56 light. This is a color balanced light, so when we're in a forensic environment, this light shows things exactly as they are without changing the color temperature of the environment at all. So this light is what allows CSI here in Las Vegas and other areas to do what they do. Next with us, we have the folks from uh, Westwind Computer. I don't know where Joey's at, but we've got the, these back there. Westwind Computer, they uh, are part of the sponsorship to make this happen. Um, we have the folks with us from Autel. I see Jeff and Ante and their crew over here. We're going to be flying their aircraft manually um, as a, a secondary type of scene capture. And then last but not least, we have uh, Unique. They're going to, their aircraft provides all the automation that we use. The equipment that we are using is the same equipment that uh, Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department uses, that North Las Vegas Police Department, uh, Henderson PD, uh, Nevada Highway Patrol, they all use the same system. And so we'll be flying the aircraft the same way that we would operate on a, a typical CSI scene. And then last but not least, we've got the Sundance Media Group crew. Uh, this is our mobile command unit that we use with law enforcement, fire, uh, and for a few other uh, pieces of work. If you have the opportunity, you're welcome to step inside and understand how we operate that vehicle for aerial security. We're primarily a training company. We train law enforcement and, and public safety and how to use drones. So. Again, what you're seeing tonight is a very miniaturized version. So I did fail to mention Fix4D, one of our more one of our most important sponsors. I can't believe I forgot them. So what's gonna happen is the aircraft is going to go up, it's going to capture our our uh, homicide victim. It's gonna be on the trail over here. After it captures that victim, we're going to dump all the data into Pix4D inside the mobile command unit. Then we're going to take the drone and fly again, and while that drone is flying, we will be uh, capturing or we will be processing that video inside the Fix4D application. You will be able to watch what's happening inside the AVOC on this television screen out here. More than what, than what Fix4D is doing on this screen out here, during the flight, this will be the first public demonstration of a product from Autel that is called the, the Live Deck product. What Live Deck does is it is a receiver that catches what's happening in the camera above from the drone and outputs directly to either a network, to ESB, or to HDMI uh, from the 
the self-powered interface. That self-powered interface is out here so you can see, see it in actual operation. So while the aircraft is flying, that receiver is capturing all the data and transferring it to this, um, this screen here. Now, there's got to be a lot to see given the fact that it's pretty dark. But you will be able to see what's happening during the manual capture with Hotel. Yeah, that's what she's got on. Like. You know, like that. It's kind of I'm in the scene with the future victim, right? Or the victim. She's a, she's okay though, so don't worry. <laughs> Alright guys, looks like it's time to go. Right, here we go. This works. Were this an actual homicide scene? The process you're going to watch happen takes about two hours. We're going to do it in about 10 minutes. So we're going to do it very, very fast so that you're not cold. There will be two flights, uh, as well as during the first, first flight happening, there will be two drones flying simultaneously. And they're going to use a laser measuring device to determine equal distances for these lights. The most important thing to making sure that this process works properly is that our lights are equidistant. Why do you suppose that is? Why do the lights need to be equidistant? Pardon? The same distance apart from the victim. Flat lighting. Pardon? Flat lighting across. That's exactly right, Linda. Thank you. So what we're looking for is flat lighting so that we have the greatest amount of shadow reduction, or what we call shadow corruption, that we can have. So crime scene photographers, where they can avoid using a flash, avoid using the flash because a flash can create reflections or it can create shadows that distort the actual image that they're looking at. And so we need to, and we can even turn it into a 360 degree light. Wow, nice. We can also soften that light up. Um, with the, there's a slide up and down diffusion system built into the light. Launch. percent autonomously there's no human input to the aircraft at all and so he set that up in a grid pattern it'll fly again and it's going to fly overhead here um, Watch. Watch it. So the aircraft is coming up right now is going to be manually flown that aircraft Okay, so they're doing the CSI reenactment scene with the drones up ahead. The drones are stitching together images. They're taking multiple images and they're going to stitch together the entire crime scene. Right now they're doing it in a 10 minute cycle. Normally it takes a couple hours to get it really detailed. But this is just for an example. Uh, you can see the, the actor that's out there and she's uh, been laying out there for about 30 minutes now. It's pretty cold out here. So she's doing a good job, but don't worry, she's okay. And uh, they're just kind of describing how the process works. Uh, Joanne, can we borrow your blanket? Keeping the, the dead lady is a little bit warm. <laughs> We're going to leave you here. We're just going to set them up on the other side. I have a little. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, I think you probably have another one in the truck bag. Oh, he's gone. Oh, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. Outdoor. I have the heated gloves, uh, the heated gloves, so... As you can see the aircraft taking off here, so there's... The television that we have here. So in a command control environment like this, 
we need to distribute video to a number of different places, whether we're dealing with law enforcement or fire, or even if we're in an environment where we're filming for television or for some kind of production. In a production environment, we call it a video, video village, and this becomes the feeder for that video village system. That, that is an, an amazing camera on that aircraft. We can just get incredible pictures. So he's now flying and snapping individual snaps that we can then stitch together and, and uh, use as part of our 3D model as we want to go down that road. She's okay. Good, we got it. Now it's going through and aligning the, the images with those data points. It's going through pretty quickly. So it seems it's got some repeated images that are in there and that's effectively what we want because of the cross grid system that we did. It's optimizing those pictures. We're going through and optimizing each block set that's in there. Low resolution point cloud, we're not skinning it, just giving it that low resolution point cloud piece of done. Then we can go through it and we can, can complete our process overall and we'll get the, the high quality image that you saw perhaps on the show floor, et cetera, et cetera. But, so why is this of value to us out in field site if we were inside an MDT, et cetera? Before CSI completes their work or before we disappear everybody from the scene, we can verify that we captured all of the pictures. Now for those of you who are asking about wind, if we have an image that was taken in bad wind environment or a high wind environment, these images that we see here that are looking pretty well down square, Instead of seeing them being flat and square, we'll see them tilted. So we'll see angles of, of what the wind has done to the camera in the shot. You can see there's one or two in there that have got a little bit of twist. That twist isn't wind. What it is is that the aircraft took the picture while it was stopping in position. So we'll see a little bit of distortion from that stop point. So what we can typically do is we'll go in and look at other images and look at what their geo set points are. Remember we did a cross hatch, yeah. so we doubled up on everything. So every one point that's here is actually represented six or seven times. We can find another image and we can lay that in and substitute and just recognize what will happen is we have an accurate image, but that particular pixel might be three or four or five centimeters off. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video featuring the CSI reenactment scene with the drone footage. Special thanks to Sundance Media Group and also Fox Fury Lighting, uh, who provided all these lights that you see over here, including the one that I'm using back here. So it was really interesting. We're going to keep watching a little bit more of it, but it's starting to get cold. So leave your comments below in the comments section. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video featuring drone footage and a CSI reenactment. Leave your comments below in the comments section and stay tuned for more videos over here at SHOT Show in Las Vegas. See ya.